This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. This time between Bob, the HP Spectre X360. I'm going to talk about the 13 and the 15 inch. So we have the 15 inch here, and the Microsoft Surface Book 2. Again, 13 and a half inch and 15 inch sizes are available here. I'm going to talk about both of them, but we have the 15 inch here. And if you want the too long, didn't watch version of this because this is really not going to be a long SmackDown. The important things to know are the Surface Book is lots more expensive. I'm going to talk about only the DGPU models, the ones with the dedicated graphics and the Intel 8th generation CPUs. That, that entry level 7th gen model with no dedicated graphics, not worth the money. Where it gets interesting is if you look at the ones with the dedicated graphics and the 8th gen quad core 15 watt CPUs. Well, this starts at $2,000 for the 13.5 inch and $2,500 for the 15 inch. Where the HP, and I'm going to use the 4K display for this comparison for pricing because the service books have quite high resolution displays, so to be fair in matching that. So for the 4K models, the 15 inch is around $1,500 and the 13 inch is around $1,250, $1,300, depends. At this time of year, this holiday deals and all that sort of thing. You might even find it for less with the 4K display on the 13 inch. So big difference in price. Why? Well, in part, you know, the usual story, Microsoft charges more because they don't want to annoy their OEMs. Their manufacturers are the folks that make most of the money for them selling off Windows licenses with every PC you buy. But also because Microsoft does some high end fancy pants things that usually uh, other manufacturers don't want to take a chance on making because they're, you know, they don't know how many they're going to sell, all that sort of thing. And Microsoft wants to be cutting edge to show the best Windows. So there's one reason right there. It's the usual same old, same old. The other thing is this is a detachable design. For those of you who are actually buying these for their intended purpose, that is convertibles, which you can use with the pen. Both of these use Entrig technology. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Well, this makes a whole lot more sense because the detachable tablet sections on both the 13 and half and the 50 inch sizes are really light, amazingly light. There's a whole computer in this tablet section. So if you're using it for note taking or if you're using it for art, that's a lot more manageable, a lot less weight to deal with. It actually is practical to just use it that way. Whereas with the Spectre X360 and all the 360 degree convertibles, that it's permanently attached. It's a laptop that just happens to flip over backwards. So you're holding a lot more weight, 4.4 pounds in the case of the 15 inch HP Spectre. I'm just under three for the 13 inch model. So important difference number one you're paying for. Number two, the graphics performance here is hugely different. With the 13 inch HP Spectre X360, you have Intel UHD 620 graphics, integrated graphics. If you get the 15 inch, you get NVIDIA MX150 graphics, very much intro level dedicated graphics. Enough to give Photoshop and Premiere a little bit extra oomph to make things feel more tolerable and enough to help older games like Bioshock Infinite be playable say with that MX150 graphics where it gets to be eh, not so great with integrated graphics. Here we have the big exciting change. NVIDIA GTX 1050 graphics on the 13 inch model and GTX 1060 graphics, which is getting into serious gaming graphics territory like the 14 inch razor blade on your 15 inch model here. So for those of you who actually are doing 3D stuff, CAD, um, Z rendering kind of software, not ZBrush because that only uses the CPU, but various 3D rendering programs. For those of you who want to play games and today's AAA titles, you can actually do that with either 13 and a half inch or 15 inch Surface Book 2 and have a pretty good time at it. You can even maintain 60 frames per second at something like 1080p resolution. That is not going to happen with the Spectres. Now let's get into the smaller and finer points of that. While we're speaking about performance, these all have 15 watt quad core Intel 8th gen CPUs. Now things get interesting. Performance is therefore similar. You might get a slightly higher grade of CPU in terms of the model number on their Surface Book 2 models. But where it really gets interesting is with the 15 inch Surface Book 2 because it actually takes that 15 watt CPU and lets it go up to consuming 20 watts of power. That The, the wattage limit really is what limits the power a lot on Ultrabook CPUs. So you really do, in terms of benchmarks and real world performance, get a noticeable kick with the 15 inch Surface Book 2. It really is nice stuff. If you're a heavy consumer of, well, horsepower, if you do do things like 4K video editing, for example, or you do do 3D rendering or playing games, that sort of thing. 
when it comes to heat and noise, specters are famously lap warmers, hand toasters, whatever you want to call them. They're thin, they're metal. The heat dissipates through the chassis, through the bottom, particularly uh, the keyboard stays pretty tolerably cool. And that's just the way the specters roll. The Surface Book 2s really stay rather cool, in part because of the ingenious design where the dedicated graphics is in the base, away from all the other heat-creating components, which are in the tablet section. The tablet is its own computer with integrated graphics if you detach it. So it manages heat well, and if when you're pushing it hard, nothing on this ever gets burning hot in my experience. It's cooler. It's also generally quieter. If you're pushing them both, certainly you'll hear the fans. You'll hear the fans uh, more often and they'll be louder on the Spectre. Both of these have an N-Trig pen. Well, HP always makes it a little confusing because sometimes you get the pen in the box, sometimes you don't. With the 13 inches, you typically do. With the 15 inch, you don't. Ours didn't come with the pen. I had to buy it extra. HP's pen's like 40 or 50 bucks. The Surface Book 2, as we know, insultingly, for this price, does not come with the pen. It is a better pen, though, in terms of the ergonomics of it, the build quality of it. The eraser on the end is very nice. It's uh, also a little bit better of a drawing experience. Both of these now support tilt. The Spectre, they came out with a driver for the 13-inch, which you should be able to lower the 15-inch. I tried them. At any rate, I couldn't get tilt to actually work in any applications yet. I think HP is still trying to get that working. Whereas out of the box, the Surface Book 2 does offer tilt. Important for artists, not so much for note takers. So also another thing to note is that Microsoft's pretty aggressive with software updates and adding things on when they can with the Surface Book line. So a little bit better there in terms of software support. HP is pretty decent, usually in the first year of a product's life, and then those software updates kind of trickle off. When it comes to other kinds of support, as in tech support, Microsoft has an advantage if you happen to live near a Microsoft store because they're pretty helpful, they're pretty nice. You can even do unit swaps if you have a defective unit during your warranty period. Uh, phone support is kind of hit or miss, just like with HP, in terms of the quality of what you're going to get. Now, how about upgrading the hardware? Not going to happen on the Surface Book 2. The, the tablet section, which is where everything is except for the dedicated GPU and the second battery, uh, you, you probably could take the base apart if you wanted, but whatever. You, you can't upgrade the RAM, the SSD, anything. This is a sealed unit here. If you need to have it serviced, you take it to Microsoft or send it to Microsoft. Now with the HP Spectre X360, it's like your typical Ultrabook, only a little bit better. For example, on the 15-inch, we actually have RAM slots, not on the 13-inch, though. RAM is soldered on board on the 13-inch. So the SSD is a standard M2 socketed SSD. You unscrew the bottom cover, and it's a little bit of work to pry it off. Let's put it that way, but you can do it. You can access that, and obviously you can access the battery and the Wi-Fi card as well while you're at it. So for... For improve, for upgradability, not that you can replace every part in it, but still you can get to it. The Spectre X360 certainly wins. When it comes to displays, again, using the 4K HP Spectre options and not the 1080p option, the 4K is noticeably more vivid, bright, and obviously more sharp uh, to match the Surface Book 2's relatively high resolution display. It's almost 4K it's because of that 3 by 2 aspect ratio that it's not for the 15 inch, and it's 3000 by 2000 for the 13 inch. The, they're both reflective displays, unfortunately. Uh, they're both kind of mirror-like. The, the Spectre is one of the most mirror-like among displays. It can be annoying. The, the Surface Book 2s are about 100 nits brighter. It's about 300 nits for the, the Spectres, both the 13 and the 15-inch 4K model, and a little over 400 nits for the Spectre, uh, for the Surface Book 2, rather. Surface Book 2's 3 by 2 aspect ratio, I, a lot of people like that a lot, and I do too, so it's not quite so widescreen. It really depends on you as to which you prefer there. It, it, the extra height, though, I, I find useful and enjoyable and reduces the amount of time I spend scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Both of these have backlit keyboards. Both of them are excellent keyboards. I'd say the Surface Book 2 is one of the nicest that I've used, short of being a ThinkPad-style keyboard. Uh, the Spectre is, is very low travel, but it's very easy to type on. You might feel like, oh, I got less travel. It's not quite as cushy feeling, but it's an excellent keyboard. They both have good trackpads. Obviously, Microsoft went with the Precision trackpad and Precision drivers on theirs. It's one of the best trackpads out there as well. HP's is pretty good. It's a Synaptics driver. It's that odd, really oblong, bigger than I can figure out why kind of they call it an image pad. I guess they think you're going to draw on your touchpad. I don't know. It's pretty decent. It's not as good as the the, the, the Surface Book 2s, but it's, it's pretty good. 
Both of them are backlit in white, so there you have that. Now when it comes to speakers, HP Spectres, or I pick on them all the time, the Spectre X360, they're just meek. Yeah, they might say Bang & Olufsen on them, but they're pretty quiet. They're very thin sounding. The headphone audio is fine, but and that's still the case with the latest 2017 generation. Surface Book and Surface Book 2 now have both really excellent speakers, especially considering the fact that these speakers are in the tablet section here, loud and full. And like if I'm sitting in a room and I want to watch a movie, I'm happy to use the built-in speakers on the Surface Book 2. Not so much with the Spectre. I usually use external speakers. Lastly, there's ports, and both of these are decent. Uh, the challenge here is that Microsoft finally gave us USB-C, but still no Thunderbolt 3. I suppose they think the $199 Surface Dock helps with that. Makes, you know, you can put 4K, a couple of 4K displays off of it, now you've got USB ports, life gets a little bit better. But HP, aha, Thunderbolt 3, both on the 13 and the 15 inch models. So yeah, that's pretty nice there. So it sounds like Bob isn't Bob anymore, the best of the best. I would still say Bob is because of that huge price difference. Not, you know, Bob is enough of a spend for a lot of people going from $12 to $1,500, like I said, for a Core i7 with 8 to 16 gigs of RAM, a 256 to 512 gig SSD RAM. That's pretty pricey stuff. Surface Book obviously is even a lot more money than that. And clearly, from what I've said, you can see you're getting neat stuff for the feature, for your for your money here, but it's hard to say that this is the best of the best because sure, you know, a Lamborghini is the best of the best compared to a Volkswagen Jetta or something like that, but the price difference makes a difference too. So I'd say for most people, Bob is still Bob, but if you have the more money to spend and you, you actually intend to use these tablet features and the dedicated graphics and the things that make Service Book special, well, then Service Book 2 is the winner. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.